You know, a couple weeks ago, we asked the question, are the Sabres legit in a good way? Are they good? Now we have to ask the question the other way. Are the Sabres legit bad as they are now on a six-game losing streak? We will evaluate. We'll break down their loss to the Vancouver Canucks, and we'll look ahead to what's coming up for the Sabres here in the Lockdown Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including our YouTube channel, where you can like and subscribe to us on YouTube. We have another loss to talk about, another one. Um, six in a row. It's a six-game losing streak for the Buffalo Sabres. O of a possible 12 points, dating back to November 4th. It's been almost two weeks um, since the Sabres have had a win. In fact, it has been two weeks since the Sabres have had a win. And they get zero, not even a loser point in overtime, zero points of a possible 12. We'll break it down. We'll talk about the loss to the Canucks, what's ahead for the Sabres on the schedule, whether or not it gets any easier. And we have to ask the question a couple of weeks after I asked, is this team legit in a good way? Are they legit bad? Because this is a bad losing streak. Uh, to fire up here for the Sabres at six in a row. Uh, at Sneaky Joe Sports, to follow us on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, shoot us a question or a comment uh, at Locked On Sabres to shoot us a uh, question or comment there as well. Or you can do that on our YouTube comment section. So, six in a row, a five to four loss to the Vancouver Canucks. Not a good team that the Sabres lose to. There have been some difficult teams that they've played. In this six-game stretch, Carolina is a Stanley Cup contender, as is Tampa Bay, as is Vegas, as is Boston. But this is now two losses to bad teams. One horrible team in the Arizona Coyotes last week, and now the Vancouver Canucks, who are at the, at the best. The nicest thing I could say to them is they are underwhelming. Uh, five to four loss. And the Sabres, again, are scoring, right? They've scored goals in a lot of these games that they are losing. They did to Vegas last week, but the Golden Knights put up seven. They lose last night despite Vancouver with Vancouver putting up five. It's just, I think for me, the end result is the takeaway for me is we have a goaltending problem again. And we've had one almost every year since Robin Leonard had that one really strong year uh, in 2017. But this is another bad year of goaltending. And it started great. Eric Comrie's first couple of starts. Craig Anderson's first couple of starts. But last night, not a good night from Craig Anderson, uh, allowing four goals or five goals to get by him. A couple of ones that he probably should have stopped. And it's not all on the goaltending. It's maybe an over overall team defense problem. They have very much missed Matias Samuelson and I think to some degree Henry Okiharu, uh, although he was back in the lineup against Vancouver on Tuesday night. But we'll break it down here and I'm going to evaluate in the second segment how real is this losing streak? How bad are they? If they are at all. And I think there is some evidence to point to that they are not actually that bad and they are just they are just the the subject of some bad goaltending right now. Um, but breaking down some moments from the Sabres loss to the Vancouver Canucks on Thursday night uh, as we run through uh, my Explain Yourself segment of the show. Again, I'm going to write down some things in my notes. Haven't been tweeting a lot as of late. Twitter is just Elon Musk ruining it. I haven't been on it as much as I usually have been. I've also been off the last week and a half from work, so that's been another reason I haven't been on it as much. But anyways, a couple of things I wrote down watching the Sabres lose to the Vancouver Canucks. Two bad power play goals. Two bad power play goals by the Sabres, both in the second period. A face-off win one-timer that was completely uncontested. I would have liked Rasmus Dahlin off the face-off, uh, the, uh, the, the goal scored by JT Miller in the second period, to shoot up to where Miller was at, contest his space, and make it tougher on him to get a clean shot away. Instead, he had an open wrist shot from the high slot, and he's able to put it barred down past Craig Anderson. I do want a little bit a save there, though, by Anderson. Uh, I know it's a tough spot. It's JT Miller, a very good player, all alone in the slot, open wrist shot, but 
I want that save. I want a goalie that's going to make that save. Um, Anderson just might not be the guy for that. Um, the other goal was the 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 goalie passing it up to the blue line. Uh, this is the goal by Bo Horvat after the JT Miller goal. Horvat goes into breakaway and scores, but Sabres are in the midst of a change. Jacob Bryson gets caught behind the play. Like you just cannot have two free Canucks behind your blue line so that the goalie's got to put up the one guy. He's got an easy saucer pass up to Bo Horvat, who's then on a breakaway. It's just too easy to get odd man rushes and open looks against the Sabres blue line right now. And they've been dealing with injuries, and that's a big reason for it, but it's not entirely the reason for it. Some of these guys making the mistakes, like Bryson, Labushkin with a mistake last night. He gets bowled over behind the net that leads to Vancouver's first goal. Um, You know, Yoki Haru is making mistakes. Guys that are in the lineup that should be in the lineup are the ones that are making some of the mistakes. And that is what is really concerned. They def- definitely miss Matias Samuelson in a big way, but this blue line should not completely ride or die with Matias Samuelson. I mean, he's great. He's a great player for the role he plays, but they got, they can't be, they can't go from a, a decent blue line to one of the worst in hockey without number 23 back there. Um, also, thing I wrote down from the loss to the Canucks Rasmus Dahlin's awareness on the final play I mean he's probably not going to score anyway but you're down one there's less than two seconds to go you get the puck at the point you got to know the situation you got to know how much time is on the clock and you got to get the wrist shot through you have a little bit of a lane there right away and Dahlin instead opts to pass to Olsen and the clock expires before the pass even gets to Olsen so Olsen's not even taking a shot attempt so I need better awareness there from Dahlin on that final play. He's got to recognize the game situation. He's got to recognize the clock. He's got to know, I got to get this puck on the net right now because if I don't, the game is over and we lose and we don't even get a chance at it. Goathead of the night for the Sabres loss to the Canucks. We always give this to a Sabre. The best Sabre on the night has to be Jeff Skinner. Two goals scored by Skinner. In fact, he starts the play on his first goal in the neutral zone, gets it to Dahlin. Dahlin makes a fabulous play, kind of cuts in, cuts back along the wall and puts it across to Skinner who puts it into the net. And then the second goal Skinner scores is an incredible play by Tage Thompson. Toe drag to the middle, finds Skinner on the outside. Thompson has looked a lot better this year for me as a playmaker. And that's good because if he's going to be a number one center, he's going to have to improve on the playmaking. He's starting to do that. And Skinner's able to bury it in the back of the net. But he was contributing to a lot of scoring chances. He had a post, uh, a crossbar in the second period that almost found the back of the net. Um, He was creating chances. He was carrying the puck. I thought Skinner had a really nice night. He scores two goals. Uh, He gets the goat head of the night. When we come back, are the Sabres legit bad? I've got some stats that point to, it depends. If you group the goaltending in with the team, which you maybe should do, they're probably not that good. If you separate the goaltending from the skaters, got some stats that back up, hey, the skaters are actually doing pretty well for themselves. They just aren't getting bailed out at all. So we'll get to that when we come back here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. And we are brought to you by Simply Safe. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes, including burglaries and package thefts, spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Season in an emergency 24 7 professional monitoring ag- agents use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door, HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when the threat is real, and even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats. To your home. 24 7 professional monitoring services cost less than $1 a day, less than half the price of ADT's traditional professionally installed system. With the top rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust system settings. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash Locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. 
All right, let's let's ask the question. Are the Sabres bad? They've lost six in a row. They are now seventh out of eight in the Atlantic Division. They have fallen way back in the standings, and we'll go look at that in a little bit here. They've lost six in a row to some good teams, but not all good teams. They've lost to some bad teams, Arizona, Vancouver. Are they legit bad? And I think there are some numbers that point to they're actually not legit bad, including they are 17th in the NHL. This is from November 4th, from their original loss in this losing streak to Carolina, from November 4th to today in this six-game sample size. The Sabres rank 17th in expected goals for percentage, according to Natural Statric. That's middle of the pack. It's not great. It's not bad either. 17th. We would all take, I think, them being 17th. That's their expected goals for percentage in that time. They are ninth in the NHL in scoring chance percentage in that amount of time. The amount of scoring chances that they get, the percentage-wise, compared to their opponent, they are ninth in the NHL in this six-game stretch. They are also second in the NHL in Corsi 4 percentage, or shot share. So they, right now, are out shooting by shot attempts their opponent more than anybody else in hockey except Carolina. Now, wh- what does this all mean? I think the the Corsi 4 percentage, more than anything, it's just kind of a interesting stat to see that they're second more than it is meaningful. But I don't want to say it's not meaningful at all. What it probably means is, or more than anything, what it definitely means is the Sabres are taking a lot of shots from the outside and that their opponents are getting quality scoring chances. Because when you see they are second in shot share percentage, but 17th in expected goals for, that clearly means that the quality that the Sabres opponents are getting is better than the quality that the Sabres are getting. But the volume makes it so that they are still a middle of the pack team during this stretch. And ninth in scoring chances, that maybe is the most meaningful number of those couple. But why the losses? Why have they lost six in a row? Because what does it all matter if they've lost six in a row? What explains it? And I think what explains it more than anything is their goaltending has hit rock bottom. They are dead last in five-on-five save percentage in this time. They are bottom five in in a uh, goal save below expected. They are not getting saves from Eric Comrie and Craig Anderson. They are left being left out to dry a lot. There have been a ton of odd man chances, but for me, I still see a team that is young and that is fast and that can score and right now just can't figure it out in their own end. And they're the youngest team in hockey. That probably was going to happen inevitably over the course of an 82 game season for some stretch of games. The important thing now will be to limit that to this stretch of games and get Matias Samuelson back in the lineup because that might be the solution to everything. So the goaltending is not going to change, right? Unless Uka Pekalukkanen shows up at midpoint of the season and he just catches fire. This is their goaltending. This is their duo, Anderson and Comrie. So one of those two is going to have to take the bull by the horns and step up because right now, neither guy is doing it. They both were doing it at the beginning of the season. And if they don't, then what we are probably destined for is this team continuing to be fun and offensive and fast, and they can score goals. Tage Thompson looking like a star player and Skinner scoring uh, and, you know, getting some flashes here from your J.J. Paterkas and your Jack Quinns. And Darlene does his thing on the back end, making some magical plays. He did one last night against Vancouver. But you'll lose more than you win because you just aren't getting the saves. And that's a frustrating place to be in because the Sabres have been in that position. It feels like a lot in the past couple of seasons, but they are not getting it right now. So I think that is really the biggest reason for why they are on this six game losing streak. So now to answer the question, are the Sabres legit bad? I think my answer for that is no, but I guess it depends what you're trying to figure out. Are you trying to figure out if this team this year is going to be good and make the playoffs? Because if if that's what you're trying to evaluate, and that's completely fair to, then your answer probably is no. They're probably not good enough to make a playoff run, to be in the playoffs. And if a team that misses the playoffs and is bottom 10, 15 in the league is bad, then I guess you have to say they're bad. Personally, I'm still trying to figure out if this group, this core, is good for the future. And for that... I'm really only evaluating the core guys. 
I'm only really looking at how's Tage Thompson playing? How is Alex Tuck playing? How's Power looking? How is Paterka looking? And Krebs. But when Ilya Labushkin is making mistakes and when, you know, uh, Kel Clegg is in the lineup making mistakes and 41-year-old Craig Anderson is letting soft goals in, for me, that's not an indictment on this whole process. The whole process is, yes, they want to make the playoffs, but I'm trying to figure out if this is the group of players and the core group that we're going forward with for a long time. That's what we're in the evaluation period for. And I, I think I'm still seeing signs that they have some of the right players in place. And maybe that's just me coming from and trying to come from an optimistic uh, POV on this. Um, but that's where I'm at. I'm taking away moments from the Vancouver game thinking, wow, what a, what a pass by Thompson to Skinner uh, cousins. What a, what a zone entry on the, the second goal that, or the middle stat goal that ends up uh, getting it within one in the third period. Uh, look at this little, the shot by power at the point that turns into a goal that Alex Tuck deflects. Like, I, I don't want to only be look, trying to find the positives because we do have to evaluate the negatives as well, but I'm still seeing a lot of good things from this young group and I'm not ready to write them off because they've put a six game losing streak together where their goaltending has let them down in a big way. And they've had some injuries. So that's where I'm at on that question. I will not say that they are legit bad. I also though will not say they're legit good. I told you two weeks ago when we asked this question, are the Sabres legit? I need to wait till December. December 1st, I feel like I'll know. You give me that amount of games, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of how good of a team you are. And right now, they're 7-8. and eight, Or 7-9, and nine even. We'll look at the standings coming back. It's perfect timing, actually, to look at the standings. So, and, d- write us up. Wh- how do you think? Do you think they're a bad team? Do you think they're a good team? Are they closer to being a good team? Are they closer to being a bad team? Let me know. At Locked on Sabres and at Sneaky Joe Sports. We'll come back. We'll sail across the Atlantic. Look at the division standings and just how far back have the Sabres fallen in just a little bit here. Also, a quick betting preview of Wednesday night's game against the Ottawa Senators is ahead here on the Locked on Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. Last segment here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. All right, it is time to sail across the Atlantic Division and just see how far back the Sabres have fallen in this six-game losing streak. The Sabres are now 7-9 with 14 points in 16 games played. And in that time, they have fallen from second place in the Atlantic to seventh place in the Atlantic, and they are now seven points back of Toronto, who is in second. They are five points back of Florida and Tampa Bay, who are in third and fourth, four points back of Detroit in fifth, and three points back of Montreal in sixth. They are ahead of Ottawa by three points. Ottawa is in dead last with 11 in 15 games played. The Sabres opponent on Wednesday night. Now, they have fallen, and they have fallen quickly. Remember, they were in the top three when this losing streak began, and now they are five points out of the top three. They are where we're getting dangerously close to writing off the season again by the time we get to December, which has happened many times over the past few seasons. And the Sabres losing ground at this rate, it it won't sustain. It, It won't even sustain to us having a season where we are wondering about the playoffs, where we are wondering about, Hey, if they put a four game winning streak together in March, maybe they could go on a little bit of a run here. They're not even keeping that in the window right now. They got to get back on track and they've got to do it quickly. If we're going to have a real season here where we are thinking about the standings on a night to night basis, this segment might die in in a month. If they continue along this path, not, you know, losing every single game, but even, you know, six, look at the 16 game stretch. They can't win just seven of their next 16. They'll be out. By the next 16 games, if the Sabres repeat what they just did, they go 7-9, and which is their current record, over their next 16 games, they will be dead when it comes to the playoff picture. They probably, in a 16-game stretch, they'll probably have to win 11 or 12. So they got to start rattling off two, three-game win streaks in a row. And here might be a decent opportunity to do so. Now, the Sabres don't play all bad teams, but... Some very winnable games coming up Wednesday night, as I mentioned, uh, against the Ottawa Senators. Then Saturday night at the Toronto Maple Leafs. That, no doubt, is a tough one. And then at Montreal and home for St. Louis. And if you haven't been keeping track of St. Louis this season, they are second last in the Western Conference. They are six and eight. So 
three of your next four games are against teams that are either below you in the standings or in Montreal's case, just barely above you. So three out of four in this next four game stretch, if they want to keep the playoffs believable, then when you play a four game stretch again, even with some of them being on the road where three of the teams are probably not good hockey teams. If we're going to be frank about Montreal, Ottawa, and St. Louis, probably not good hockey teams. You got to win three. You got to get six points uh, out of this stretch here. Um, so that, that to me would be the goal for the Sabres in these next four games, which goes from tonight until uh, next Wednesday in the next week here. So tonight's game against the Ottawa Senators. Let's do a little preview looking at betonline.net. Our partners over at BetOnline, your number one source for football, hockey, betting, information, stats, news, and analysis all season long. Check them out for the FIFA World Cup, which is getting rolling next week. A lot of good information there uh, tonight. Looking at the spread for the Sabres and the Ottawa Senators, the Sabres are a very slight underdog, plus 148 uh, on the money line, Ottawa favorite and minus 164. And if you look at the puck line, the Sabres plus a goal and a half, so to lose by one or win, minus 170. Uh, Ottawa at minus a goal and a half. They have to win by two is plus 150. Uh, I like the Sabres on the money line tonight at plus 148. Ottawa has not been an impressive team to me, uh, and I'll go with the Sabres even though they're on the second of a back-to-back. The over-under in this game is seven, plus 114, so plus money on the over. I do like the over in this game. Neither team is limiting chances all that much. Both teams have some offensive firepower. Not great goaltending situations right now either. So I like the over seven goals, even though it's a very high number uh, for this game. So over seven for me. Uh, I like the Sabres on the money line at plus 148. And then how about a prop bet for tonight's game? Uh, I am going to go back to, I'm going to go, no, you know what? I'm going to go for Peyton Krebs. I've been thinking about this. I'm going to pull the trigger on it. I was going to go back to the Dylan Cousins well. Uh, who's at plus 325 to score a goal. I'm going to go to the Peyton Krebs well. Plus 500. He has not scored a goal yet. I wonder what odds you give me on him to be the next Sabre to score his first goal of the year. But I like Peyton Krebs. Plus 500. He's getting a little bit more ice time. Starting to get some his own time in the offensive end. Um, and I've, I'm, I'm beginning to like his game a little bit. And I wonder when Don Granado will start to commit to him as like his next pet project, like get that going the next Thompson. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering about how much the ice time has gone up, it hasn't like gone, you know, cr- it hasn't been like a crazy amount that it has gone up. Uh, if you look at the Sabres last three games, Krebs went from playing, you know, 10, he played 10 31 against Tampa. He played 10 58 against Arizona. The last three games, 13 minutes, 15 seconds, 14 minutes, 15 seconds, 15 minutes and 13 seconds, which was his season high uh, against Vancouver. So a little bit more ice time, uh, a little bit more around the net offensive zone starts and whatnot. I'm going to go Peyton Krebs score a goal. Plus I'm getting amazing odds at plus 500, five to one to have that happen. All right, enjoy Sabres and Senators tonight. It's a 7 o'clock puck drop. We don't know yet who's starting in goal uh, as of time of recording here, uh, so I don't have uh, goaltending situations for you, but either way, these teams aren't uh, aren't great in that. Uh, but anyways, enjoy the game. Hopefully the Sabres get back in the win column and we can talk about it uh, in a more uh, optimistic show tomorrow here in the Lockdown Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your next listen, Locked On Sports Today. Catch up on the biggest stories of the day in sports, plus get instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Locked on Sports Today, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. We'll talk to you tomorrow after Sabres and Senators here on Locked on Sabres.